Ahoy! He's Straw, I'm Parker, and together we are the Battle Hammer. Do 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 do! Toy Soldiers! Um, yeah, so episode two of Parker Paints. Uh, hence me standing in front of my pile of shame, which has got no smaller, but I mean, it's only been a week. I'm um, going to be hopefully doing these every week. Um, I am going to be covering th texture three ways. Uh, if you are like me and you find it really hard to do decent blends and smooth transitions and all that kind of stuff you can hide your uh, incompetence via the medium of texture um, so rather than doing a smooth creamy blend that goes from one colour to another colour and you can't tell where that's come from whether it be through wet blending or glazing or something like that and uh, if you're a bit like me and you're a bit inept you can do texture which will give the um, model a certain amount of grittiness uh, which might be what you're looking for um, it can also simulate things like cloth or leather or um, knitted fabric even which is what, what three of the things I'm going to be showing you today um, I'm going to be doing a woven fabric type um, skirt dress thing uh, I'm going to be doing a knitted type top using lots of tiny dots uh, and then I'll be using some cracked weathered kind of leather effect um, so they're all really good ways of, of, you know, adding some texture to your model so it doesn't look super smooth and a bit weird. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Dunsmouth Witch because I'm working on my Mythos minis at the moment. And I should be doing the leather on um, Kodiak from um, the Deadly Seven, part of the Wild West Exodus range. Um, if you want to order them, there's various links in the comments down in the doobly-doo down below. If you want to pick up a uh, box of either of those models. Um, from Wildstorm Games or Whaling Games or wherever, or those two <laughs> is the all. Um, so we'll go to my desk and uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Let us know obviously in the comments down below if it helped or didn't help or if there's any advice you have to give me. So um, on to the next bit. Right, so here I am at my desk um, with the Dunsmouth Witch. <laughs> Um, I will be painting her skirt here first of all using Dark Reaper um, just watered it down a little bit um, and this bit's going to be fairly blah I'm just gonna block in her skirt I should probably be using a larger brush but I like this brush it's a size 1 series 33 from Rosemary & Co. I just kind of like it. Uh, feels good. This one's a little bit old and battered. Um, I'm not going to chat too much over this because this is just blocking in the skirt so you don't need to see much. Um, so I'll have a bit of a fast forward. So I've done um, a couple of coats of the Dark Reaper on the skirt and now I'm going on with a mixture of um, Army Paint and Matte Black, CL75 Ink Tense Blue and a bit of Flow Improver and a bit of water um, just as kind of a targeted wash because I want to dark it, darken down um, the bits in our skirt. Again this isn't the, the texture bit necessarily. Um, so I'm probably going to, you know, fast forward a bit of this. Um, just because I wanted to, yeah, darken down a little bit of her skirt. In the recesses.
Right, now it's on to the actual texture bit. Um, I've taken the original um, Dark Reaper from G-Dubs uh, and I am mixing progressive bits of um, Secret Weapons Weathered Wood. Uh, it's kind of a nice desaturated, very light blue-grayish kind of colour. Um, I've used that on a lot of this model or this model's um, compatriots in the hidden ones, um, and it's kind of nice to to keep that vibe going on. Uh, this time I'm using a series two, uh, sorry, series thirty three size two brush, not for any particular reason, just because I've used this one less, so I've got a better point on this one than I did on the previous brush. Um, so starting with a little bit of the dark reaper. Mostly Dark Reaper, but slightly um, just a smidge of this weathered wood. So now I'm going to, you know, normally I'd highlight these kind of ridges in her dress, but rather than just straight highlight, I'm going in and I am. Um, there we go, that's better. Uh, making little hash marks just with the point of the brush. I'm just doing this on a diagonal. Now this will be slightly hard to see because this is after all the first layer of highlights. Let's do it on here. I'm just doing like a downwards diagonal kind of thing. This is to simulate the weft, is that the right word? Yeah, let's go with weft. Simulate the weft of the of the you know I imagine it's a, a woolen skirt or something like that. I don't know how well this is showing up on camera. And then we'll just do this a few times and then once we've done this we'll go on with a slightly lighter one and a progressively lighter one and so on and so forth. Because what we don't we don't want it to be like a distracting texture. Because if we make it too strong, it will look weird. Because you don't look at someone on the street and go, "Wow, what a very textured pair of jeans they're wearing." It's just a subtle thing you notice. Oops, that's too much. You want bet the best possible point on your brush for this. Because obviously this is tiny, tiny lines. that would to our mix. Make it a little bit brighter. And if you're um you know good at this you might want to make it slightly um less prominent. So I'll just crack on with this and I'll show you later on kind of when I'm a bit closer to the end.
now I'm going to do the last little bit and this is pretty much pure weathered wood and I'm going to be less aggressive with these highlights same as you would you know with any kind of highlight you want to do it on less space than the previous highlight uh, and then we're just about done you can also if you want to this is kind of one directional you know I'm just all going in the same same way if you really wanted to, you could do like a crosshatch type effect, which would look really good as well. highlighted her skirt but that texture just makes it look a little bit different um, you know it's not 100% perfect you know practice makes better um, the more you do it the more brush control you have you know you're gonna learn a little bit it's just a nice little technique to have in your pocket um, does it look perfect no but it looks alright I'm pretty sure for that Okay, so that is the skirt done. Next I'm going to do her, her top, just there. Oops. And this is I'm going to kind of replicate a knitting type pattern um, by using dots instead of lines. Similar sort of thing though. See in a sec. So I'm ready to do the, um, whatever this is, the her blouse, her jumper, her top. Um, I've got some khaki from Vallejo um, and I'm just going to do a standard kind of base coat so I will be pretty quick with this you can still see there's some of the um, zenithal prime that is showing through so you can see the darker in the shadows and whatnot uh, I've now added in a little bit of stone grey to my original khaki colour um, this time I'm using a size 1 from Artis Opus because it's the it's the best point I've got I think um, and now instead of the slashes we were doing before we're just going to do tiny dots And do that as highlighting. And this is obviously going to take a while. You don't want them to kind of turn, you've got to be careful that they don't turn into slashes as you get quicker. I hope you can see this all right. If you press down too hard, they will turn into um, slashes because of the shape of the brush. So you want to be very, you know, super gentle. Make sure you don't want to have too much paint on your brush. Because you don't want to blip, you know, you don't want to blip, blip, blip. You get some paint, maybe take a little bit off. Just check the point. And 
and as always do bear in mind that the paint will dry slightly different to how it appears. I'll just crack on with this for a bit. Now I'm going to do the same process with um, almost entirely stone grey. Okay, that's that done. It's not super, you know, what's the word? Super contrasty yet. Um, but now I'm adding some deck tan to the stone grey um, to make an even lighter colour. And then I'll probably finish with either the deck tan or it might even go lighter than that depending on how it turns out at the end. Um, so again, as with normal highlights, we're trying to make sure that we're hitting, you know, a bit less than what we hit before. But again, using this pattern of dots. To give it a bit of texture. And you could use this for like knitted clothing. Maybe some sort of, you know historical fantasy type stuff you know to make it look a bit less um, processed than either modern or sci-fi um, 
maybe you want to do some sort of mottled skin or fish scales or something like that. Um, there are plenty of things you could use this technique for rather than just like a knitted top like I'm doing here. Now we've got just pure deck tan. Uh, so let us know in the comments below if you think this is a, you know, an interesting technique, or if any of these techniques are interesting. And is there anything that you'd be using them for? Um, do they hide, you know, do they hide the fact that I'm not a very good painter, or do they just look sloppy? Um, I think for these Mythos models they're supposed to be kind of dark and gritty and excuse the noise that's a train you know Mythos is a dark gritty game um, you know Cthulhu Mythos type stuff these particular models are you know they're the outcasts, they're your deep ones, your, they are the Dunsmith inbred crew. So I think it kind of suits them. I think, yeah, for that, as I was saying earlier on, that fantasy element, that kind of old timey clothing works really well. Also, um, you know, what would you use it for? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you've got any other ways of doing texture, I would be very happy to see if you've got any hints and tips for me. We are, after all, all on this journey together of painting minis. Without sounding too hippie about it. And you just keep doing this, tappy tappy tappy. Takes a while. Don't necessarily want to paint the entire model like this. Fur, you only got to do a little bit of, you know, slightly longer lines, and it'd be fur, you know. I always think sometimes that you know highlights are they're the fun bit because you're doing all the interesting you know finishing off of a model almost much more interesting than base coating or anything like that but also you're never quite sure if they're going to work or not because they dry a lot less bright you know so you're going over the model thinking oh it looks rubbish then you give it a couple of minutes to dry, you think, oh, okay, that blends in a lot better than I thought it would, so that's okay. And we're just dabby, 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 dabby. I mean, you could use these on, you know, Aristea models. Not Aristea, what am I thinking of? Infinity. Infinity is all very much like cyberpunky, smooth blends, all that kind of stuff. But actually, if you were playing Ariadna, is it Ariadna? Um, you know, maybe that would give a cool look of. They're not as uh, technologically advanced as your Pan Oceania and your. Eugene. Post apocalyptic stuff. 
you know, to add a bit of grit and grunge to those kinds of models, that'd be cool. So I have decided to um, go with a secret weapon uh, with the wood. Um, that will bring the highlights together um, to make them look slightly more cohesive. Um, and also, I just wanted a little bit more pop on, you know, very highlighted parts. You know, the edge of her even beasts. Um, I have added a very, very tiny amount of the deck tan uh, just to bring them bring the tones together a little bit because sometimes if you um, it can look a bit too harsh um, which isn't what I'm going for I think the hardest thing about this technique is really just making sure that you end up with dots and not ending up with because if you put too many dots all together they just become a big blob and then you don't have the texture so do be careful, um, especially with these last ones. Sometimes the uh, ones that are underneath don't matter as much because they'll kind of show through a little bit. But these last ones, you really want to be pretty sparing with them. You know, they're just to finish that highlight off. I'm not going to here. If you thought you wanted to went a bit too far you could always glaze the original colour back over to kind of bring everything together So, I'm really happy with how that's come out. Uh, it's not too um, over the top, you know. You could you could easily go higher uh, or deeper um, with the colours, uh, like a, a richer brown rather than a khaki, um, or even go up to off white if you wanted to. But I'm kind of happy with that. I don't want it to be overpowering. I'm probably going to, you know, once I finish the rest of the model, I can always have another look and see if I want to bring those highlights up or down. Um, one thing I'm going to do, just going to use a little bit of um, everyone's favourite Agrax Earthshade. Um, I'm not doing a full wash with this. I'm not like, you know, big old full brush and going overboard. I'm just, just going to kind of reinforce those shadows a little bit and glaze that in there. Um, like where her belt meets her top. and under her large heavy breasts if I get anywhere I don't want it then I'll, I'll you know wick it back up with the brush um, around her whatever this is a little you know not buttons but you know what I mean Doesn't, you know, I don't want to vastly change what I've done. Just kind of helping those shadows pop a little bit. You know, just bring out the contrast. Not everything has to be, you know, like a massive change. As sometimes a subtle thing will play on the eye and you go, oh yeah, actually, just notice that. Maybe where I've done a a sloppy job of painting the lines you know sometimes a, a, a little bit of wash can you know not every time you just want to be as careful as you can but sometimes a little bit of wash can you know make up for a little tiny mistake you made it's not a black lining as such I just want to re-emphasize some shadows between where her skirt meets her dress 
or sorry, her skirt meets her top rather as well. To stop it from looking like one big sloppy mess. There we go, I think that's that's not done a huge amount, but I think that's just helped a little bit, you know. Um, so there we have the Duns with the Wish. She's not finished, obviously. Um, but two different examples of texture uh, on her outfit. So I've got the hash marks, uh, sorry, the, the lines on her dress and then the spots on her top, just to kind of make her a little bit more worn. And you don't have to do this on every model, you know, obviously it does take a, a certain amount of time, so it's a lot easier to just, you know, paint on whatever. Um, but I think that adds a, a little bit to her her look, you know, makes her look a bit more dishevelled and um, interesting. Um, so next I'm going to be doing some leather. See you in a bit. Right, so we've done two locks of texture, now we're doing a third. Uh, this mean looking ombre is Kodiak from the game Wild West Exodus. The posse box is the Deadly Seven, um, who are next on my, uh, kind of up there on my painting queue. Um, done a little bit of work on him already as you can see I kind of got him um, tabletop ready just so I could play him in some games um, but now I really want to finish this posse off I'm going to go back to them and kind of give them the, the care and attention that they deserve this guy Kodiak is one of my one of my favorite dudes in there because he's just a beast with his razor claws and whatnot um, and I'm going to be working on his little pouch and belt straps and stuff um, I'd love to do some more texture on her, but there's not really anything I kind of want to do with her. Um, I want to finish her off, obviously, but I mean, texture-wise, there's not. She hasn't got enough leather. She's got a little pouch there, but without like a 4K camera and a macro lens, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. And to be fair, nor am I. Um, so I'm just going to go over these um, straps and belt and whatnot with a little bit of Mornfang Brown, which is going to be my base coat, my base tone. I've already painted it in this, but I'm just kind of reinforcing those colours. Um, so I went over it with a wash and whatnot, and it's, you know, the coverage isn't great. Just to kind of give it a nicer vibe. So this won't take me long. See you in a sec. Okay, so that was fairly simple. You know, I just rebase coated stuff. I left the shadows away, so you know, it's just a nice, even tone. Um, I've added to the Mornfang brown a little bit of Deathclaw brown, which is kind of the next. Or was that the next one? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm using Deathclaw brown now, um, which is a, a kind of a similar colour but but lighter. Okay. Um, now this is very similar to the. Um, first texture I did and there's going to be lots of little lines and scratches except rather than just doing lines and scratches I'm really I mean this is going to be difficult for me because I'm not in any way a pro painter or anything like that um, I just kind of want to make it look a little bit haphazard Make sure that the paint is um, watered down enough. You don't want it obviously too wet, but you do need it to flow off the brush very well because you're going in and doing very, very fine lines. So for example, on this little pouch here, just a few scritchy scratches. Just go with straight death claw brown to be honest because that's not showing up as well as I'd like. And I'm kind of trying to emphasize, 
know the top of his. This isn't about highlighting the whole thing. It's just using lots of little scratchy lines. To kind of emphasize the you know the, like his pouch where it opens. Corners and stuff, you know. I'm not going to lie, this isn't something I've done a huge amount of. But you know, you're looking at you know, little hash marks, little cross lines, little scratches on the, you know, even on the flat parts. Keep a bit of interest. I don't know if I'm using the best paint in the world because this doesn't look like it's covering particularly well. You're, you're almost using the tip of the pen like a, sorry, the tip of the brush like a pen to scratch around, you know, especially parts like the, um, you know, where the buckles are and waste where you know that it's going to go keeping up his belt and whatnot. This isn't as uniform as the previous method. You just want to do lots of little scratchy scratches. Also bearing in mind that you know, yeah, you want to do highlights and stuff. So, and if you go a bit too bright, it doesn't matter. You can always tone it down later on with some uh, with a glaze. I'm just going to crack on with this for a little bit, and you'll you'll see how it turns out, and so will I, because you know every day's a school day, right? So that's that done. Um, can't see a massive amount on the uh, camera, but you know, it's there. Um, I have now added a little bit of pale skin from uh, Scout 75 to the Deathclaw Brown I was using, um, just to highlight up a little bit. And again, we're doing you know lots of little scratchy scratches. Just, I mean, if you can, if you know anything, I don't know a huge amount about leather. I'm not a leather worker or anything like that. Um, but imagine it's the stress points of the leather, you know, so it'll be, you know, like the bits where the buckles are and where it opens and the bottom of it, where it gets jabbed about. Uh, there's a thing they talk about in films. I think it's um, so it's the the difference between realism and realistic. It's like a superhero film is not realistic because there aren't any superheroes. However, you can still have realism. It can still be real within the confines of the film itself. Um, you know, the powers can work. Um, you know, they can have a 
pseudo-scientific explanation. Um, people can keep the same powers over time rather than randomly getting new ones. Um, you know, you look at Star Wars and stuff and people complain that oh, this shouldn't have happened and that shouldn't have happened because there's no evidence that this would end up like that or whatever. And that's the, the difference between realism and being realistic. You want a con continuity. So just because this guy's a you know, seven foot tall bear man, rawr. Um If you were to paint him up like, well, you know what? If he was a seven foot tall bear man, this is what he'd look like. You know, his leather, if it looks like leather, then you're going to think, oh, well, that's leather then, isn't it? And also, um, you got to bear in mind what, what looks real from a miniature perspective compared to what would look real in real life. You know, the colours would not be as bright and as vibrant, but it wouldn't look as good on the table. And we're not scale modellers, are we? We are dudes who paint toy soldiers. And if they don't look cool, what's the point? You know? Toy soldier philosophy, eh? Who'd have thought? So now I'm going to go in with almost a pure um, bit of, oh, what's this called? Pale skin. Um, I've got a tiny, tiny bit of the Death Claw Brown in the previous, de the previous colour. Um, again, as I was saying earlier on, just to um, keep it cohesive. I don't want lots of this on. Just... No, just enough to really make those highlights pop. Okay, so I've done uh, lots of scritchy scratches on his um, straps and whatnot. Um, I don't know if you can see here, uh, they're quite bright now, um, and I'm going to knock them back a little bit. Now this has a couple of advantages. One, um, it brings the colours together, um, and I'm going to be using Ink Tense Wood from Scale 75, which I am watering down quite a lot. So I really want this to be more like a glaze kind of thing going on. Um, and it will bring the colours together. Um, but also, because it dries slightly gloss, um, it gives a nice final look. Um, plus... Because you're putting a translucent paint over kind of other colours, it kind of gives a um, not massive, it kind of gives a nice illusion of depth. Um, one thing they do when they're doing makeup, like uh, in films and stuff, like. Um, because human skin is translucent, partially translucent, right? So one thing they do in films when they're doing makeup for people, like big special effects makeup, is they have to um, create layers, right? So you've got, you know, the, the blood, which is got the skin over it and whatnot. And this kind of, you know, leather, I mean, leather's not the same as skin. 
but by having a um, an illusion of depth it gives it this kind of you know image of reality if you want probably sounds a bit pretentious but you know what I mean So there we go, and you can see that's kind of given it a much richer tone, really brings the whole thing together, especially on his pouch, hopefully you can see how good that looks, I'm really pleased with that actually, a little bit of, you could use a, a wash, like a, an Agrax Earthshade or a um, Seraphim Sepia, but I think the, the great thing about the ink is it's highly pigmented, but also super translucent, so it covers everything cut you know tints it but it doesn't hide any of the details uh, like a wash might or a wash might be too insipid and not actually um, you know blend everything together um, so that's that so I've done three textures I um, hope you enjoyed that um, I'll do a little spinny thing once the models are all finished so over to future me well as you can see, I haven't quite finished uh, either of them. I've mostly finished the Dunsmouth Witch, but she's not completely done yet. Um, and uh, Kodiak's still got a very long way to go. But we did the textures, um, so here's what they kind of look like and stuff. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, definitely has been a lot longer than I imagined it would be. I thought it might be about 20 minutes, but it's at least double that, so I'm sorry about that. Thanks for everyone who's watched, if you have. And if you haven't, well, you won't hear this. Um, we we appreciate everything, you know, all the people who have commented on the last one. Uh, that's been really nice. Uh, some great feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully there will be plenty more of these uh, coming in the not too distant future. I should try and get one of these a week out. Uh, next one's going to be a little bit of object source lighting. Uh, it might be shorter. It might be just as long. We'll see how it goes in the edit. Um, let me know if that's the sort of thing you're interested in if you want like a more long form chatty kind of one or you want a bit more here's how I do this thing no more no less um, leave some comments in the thing below and we'll happily uh, maybe not acquiesce to your requests but at least take your feedback on board um, if you like what we do at the Battle Hammer uh, there are various things you can do in the comments down below in the doobly do even um, you can donate money to our Patreon feed, you can uh, support our affiliate links, uh, Wildstorm Games, Whaling Games, Amazon, all that kind of jazz. Um, but if you do nothing else, make sure you do this one thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe. If you don't like it and don't want to subscribe, you don't have to like and subscribe. But we would like it if you liked and subscribed. And until next time, stay hammered. <laughs>